All right, we are Zooming here at VirginiaPreps.com style. Also for our audience that will be tuning in on 757 Saturday Sports Talk on ESPN Radio 94.1. Yours truly, Matt Hatfield here with you and joined by a special guest, one of the all-time best when it comes to patrolling the sidelines in basketball. He won his 500th career game at Kempsville High School in Virginia Beach in 2017. But well before then, he trailed the path at Prince George's County's very own Potomac High School up there in Oxon Hill, Maryland, won a couple of state championships there in 1981 and 1989. He went 293 and 89 there. So if my math is right, Coach, I think he had 520 victories. We're talking with our good buddy Taft Hickman, who, by the way, coached a man you'll be seeing coaching game three and four, maybe more if it goes beyond that in the NBA Finals, Monty Williams, who will be part of our main discussion today. Taft, good to see you, my friend. How's life treating you in Phoenix before you board the plane back for the East Coast? Hey, Matthew, everything is great. Uh, it's been warm. It got a little warm last night. It was 95 and it was 95 outside. And it turned the uh, air conditioning down a little bit more. But uh, just beside the warm weather, everything else has been great. Everything's been great. I, I heard 111 degrees of the day. Is that right? 111, it's, that's normal for right now. That's normal. And, you know, a lot of people that live in Phoenix are people that I know that I've coached over the years to the coach, don't don't go out in the heat too much. Try to drink as much water as you can. So I've been trying to follow their rules since they live here. Yeah, stay hydrated, number one. And number two, find a pool that you can jump into or get some uh, relaxation there. A now, pool on the inside. A pool on the inside. The water's hot outside. That's true. An indoor pool is better than an outdoor pool with 111. That's for sure. Now, were you when you coached, though, were you a guy that wanted to turn up the heat on your opponents? Or did you like it cold in there? Because some of you coaches have those tactics when you play with the temperature indoors there. I, I kind of like had it up and moved it down. It's, it's going to move it around a little bit before I, before I can get comfortable. Good deal. Well, um, tell us about more, more about Monty Williams here. And, and I understand he was born in Fredericksburg, Virginia. So give us the time capsule, what brought him to Maryland, and tell us about your first ever encounter with Monty. Yeah, uh, uh, Monty's a rooster down in uh, Fredericks, Fredericksburg. And um, I guess I met Monty when he was like 13 or 14, probably 14 as a ninth grader okay. uh, at Potomac. And um, one of the other players brought him over and introduced me to him. Well, he brought him over and introduced him to me. And uh, gangly like six three, six four kid at the time. And because uh, he, he played for Oxen Hill Boys and Girls Club, so I really didn't see him that much. I really didn't know he was coming. I knew he was coming from my other boys and girls club, but I didn't know Monty was coming. To the kid brought him over, and I said, okay. I, I saw some potential in him, and uh, that's where we, we started. When uh, I watched him on um, – Ninth grade, you know, JB played real well. Uh, as far as that was concerned, in tenth grade, I uh, I watched him, and uh, he came in tenth grade practice. He came in the varsity practice um, one time, and uh, I wasn't really didn't want to really play him because our front line was so big. He was, he was about six five then, about six five, hundred seventy pounds. My front line was going like six seven, six eight, and I didn't want to miss really coming on the varsity and sit on the bench. So I said, well. Uh, you better go back over to JV and spend another year of just getting your game together. But he didn't know that I was watching the JV. I was watching him every game because the seniors that year, we had actually four seniors starting. So I knew that he was going to step in and play as as, as a junior. Mm -hmm. And you've been known for your towering front lines over the years, whether it was at Potomac High School there in Maryland or at Kempsville High School with some Division One big men in Denzel Bowles, Devon Washington, Aaron Brackett. At what point did you know – this young man was special in regards to not just the basketball ability, but beyond that, where coaching could one day be his calling. Um, just his responsibility, um, a very responsible, uh, 3.0 grade average. Uh, never heard any teachers say anything negative about him. Uh, administration loved him, um, one, one of those type of guys. And um, I guess um, we go to camp, we spend a lot of time together because uh, mom was a, a a single parent, uh, single parent mom. She worked down in DC and she would get home you know, late in the evening times. And uh, he used to have to school and work out for practice. So after practice working out, he needed to ride home. <laughs> so he kind of started riding with me and we would ride every day. I mean, he, he would stay out there every day. He said, Coach, how long are you going to step to school? I said, Well, you know, I'll be here at 4 30 every day, 4 35 o'clock. So you'd ask him to work out in the gym. And uh, he would ride with me every day home. And uh, the apartment complex he lived in, he said, Coach, can you watch and make sure I get into the house? So I'd stay in the car and make sure he got in okay. You know, he got everything. He'd wave back. And he always said thank you uh, from that. And then I guess later, that I told his junior year, he 
he got his learners permit. You know, his mom didn't have a car. So I said, well, how are you gonna learn how to drive? He looked at me. <laughs> so we drove up and down the parking lot at Potomac. And, uh, you know, it's one of my things that I do is drive is driving school. We drove him down the parking lot in Potomac and um, taught him how to drive. And I believe I took him to get his license. If I, if I, you know, if I remember, I think I, took, think I took him to get his license, but just watching him play uh, academically, uh, he was in all the strong classes. Um, just, you know, banner is yes, sir, no, sir. I was the athletic director at that time also. And he was always, he would always stop by the office and we spend time talking um, about things. And I guess toward the end of his junior year, we, we'd had a car accident uh, in September. We lost three starters. We lost three starters who was going to probably start with Monty. And um, we lost those three guys uh, who, were, who were all probably Division one basketball players. So Monty kind of took off his junior, he just kind of took over his junior year. I think he averaged something like maybe 16, 17 a game and maybe nine or 10 rebounds. And you could just see him blossoming as a player, you know, as his offensive move. Wasn't a real quick kid, but could get to where he wanted to get to. And he wouldn't let you out working. I mean, even in practice, uh, when we ran sprints, he wasn't the fastest guy, but he never finished last. And he, he, he never uh, finished second. He always finished first. And he finished all the sprints because, you know, he's high am. I like to run. <laughs> I like to run. Well, his story is remarkable. We can go through all the different details. You mentioned that, that tragedy there. He also dealt with a personal tragedy with his wife dying in a car crash in 2016, and they had five children together. And you were there with him when he got the first ever Sager Strong Award named after Craig Sager at that first NBA award show in June of 2017. And he went through some things health-wise while he was at Notre Dame. But I heard Bill Parcells during one of those America's Game NFL Network marathon features. You know, I love those, all the different histor historical features coach say about when you win a championship, whether it's a professional high school, college, it's almost like a blood kinship or transfusion part of their bloods in you part of their bloods. You know, when you win that with them and it's 30, 40 years later, I mean, you still keep in touch with all those guys, including him. I mean, how do you reflect back on those times and, and great times? Well, I, I didn't, I didn't notice anything, but from the picture of our 1989 uh, state championship, Monty had his arm around me. I'm like exhausted. Well, we won the game uh, pretty big, but I'm exhausted. Season over, we didn't play 26 games. Uh, you know, we, we played anybody uh, and everywhere. As a matter of fact, that year in uh, 88, we came down and played in the Christmas tournament down at Norfolk Catholic in 88. Uh, at that time, we, we won an Alfred Catholic tournament. So we didn't have any problems playing anybody. We got invited to a lot of places to play around the country. And I was totally exhausted. And on the picture, He's got his arm around me. And at that time, that's when I had hair. And they had made me a bet that if they won the state championship, I had to go get a haircut just like them. <laughs> and they had this thing called a hook part or something in your hair. So on, I guess on that Monday, they had me at the barber shop. <laughs> and uh, mine was the first one there because he's one of the ones that had the uh, hook part. But uh, and, and also he said in the game, he said, I won your state championship. You know, that, that's that's those are exact words. I never forget them. And even when we traveled up and down, the road to basketball camps, everybody would choose Monty. We would go to five-star camps. He got chosen in the top group. He was a top five player at five-star. Uh, and the coaches said, you know, hey, he's like a perfect kid. Wow, that's something else. We're reminiscing with the one and only Taft Tickman, who coached at Kempsville High School, also won a couple state championships during his time at Potomac High School in Maryland. He coached Monty Williams, whose Phoenix Suns lead the Milwaukee Bucks two games to none of these current NBA finals as we chat on this Friday morning, early afternoon, wherever you are, whether it's West Coast, East Coast, he's on the West coming East. And coach, uh, as you're watching, you get invited to come to game one and game two. Tell me about that thrill, being there in the arena of that sellout crowd in Phoenix, raucous environment, Suns win game one, win game two. And then I'm sure at some point during this uh, vacation, if you will, or experience, you've got to pinch yourself and say, wow, look at my guy. He's two wins away from an NBA championship. Oh, well, yeah. Well, well last night, um, I sit back. I was in. I was in uh, Monty's suite with, with his family, and I kind of sit back and I walked in the back of everyone. And I watched the, the whole fourth quarter standing up. I was like in the back, and I was like, I, I was like saying, "Wow!" And I, as I watched him on the court, and I watched his demeanor. You know, I took several pictures uh, from uh, from up in the sky suite uh, of him uh, coaching, and it, it was. Uh, we had talked. Almost, we talk almost every day. We, we, we text each other almost every day. And then when he wants to talk, 
he'll call me and we'll talk. If I want to talk, I can call him and, and we'll talk. He'll he'll pick up. It's, it's, it's mostly texting. And um, it's just um, uh, when I text him on, um, I guess, as they beat the, the, the Clippers, I said, look, I really love to come out to the games. I said, whatever you can do on your end, I'll do on my end to get out there. And he hit me up on Saturday morning. He says, coach, he said, uh, hit my wife up. You know, she's taking care of all the tickets. I was like ecstatic. I was like, wow. And um, so I, you know, I, he gave me her email number, her, her email, her cell phone number. I said, she's had, and I know how being a coach and even on the high school level, I know when you get into the playoffs and as big as the NBA, that's the biggest it goes in, in America, as well, big as it goes in the world. And I know that his time is precious. You know, his time, and you know, I, I haven't seen him just set up a bit for the basketball court, but we've texted every day that I've been out here. And his wife him said, you know, he, he's gone 12 or 13 hours a day. And I know he's got those guys in focus. And I didn't want to take anything away from him or focus or whatever. I just came out. I want to just enjoy the games and enjoy him sitting down there coaching. That's what I've been doing. Well, I can see you are from some of the uh, social media photos. You got a chance to hang out with Ann Myers Drysdale up there in the suite. Oh, Annie is great. Annie is great. Annie, um, uh, Monty actually, she actually wanted to know who coached Monty. And that's how Monty actually introduced me to her. Okay. And uh, she sent me a book by John Wooden, autographed by John Wooden. And we've been communicating for almost a year. Uh, we communicate on email. She sent me all the, um, the, the press at the end of the games. Uh, she sent me all, all the information. And sometimes we talk on the phone and, and they just think he's just a wonderful person. So I think the thing was, uh, she sent me a personal letter, which my daughter said, up in Maryland said, Dad, I got that letter. He said, I want that letter from Ann Myers. And it, but she told me who she was at first. And I was like, you, I don't need an introduction. I know who you are. I know who you are. To speak on, Coach, what you've seen him persevere through. I mean, all you coaches give life lessons and you talk about, you know, dealing with adversity. And, and Monty's done that. And he's reached the pinnacle as far as awards and all the accolades. And he's, and he's two wins away from it as an NBA coach here. I mean, when he was at Notre Dame. Highly regarded, Digger Phelps brings him in, and then he had the hypertrophic cardiomyopathy issue. He didn't know if he'd play again. He ended up having an NBA career. Um, just and then you know we mentioned the, the personal tragedy from a, from the family standpoint. How proud you are of not just what he's become as a man and a coach, but how he's impacted others through the game of basketball and beyond it. Well, you have to have a belief, and and, and my thing is uh, you have to believe in God, and you have to believe, believe that. There's someone controlling everything that you do. And, and the belief is, even when I started coaching myself, you know, I, I asked God to just give me the wisdom to coach these young kids. Give me the wisdom to be there for them. Give me the wisdom to carry on and just do the things. And the, the caring wisdom of being there. And I, I see Monty has those same traits. And I know one of the things that he says that I say, and even as I Kemp's film, and I think the kids understood it, after every game, I would say, I love you. And, you know, after every practice, I said, I love you. I said, no matter how hard I was on you, no matter how hard I push you, or I push you academically, or I push you on the basketball court, you know, that there's still a love bond from me to you. I'm not, you know, trying to break you down. I want you to build so when you get older, you can put back into what I've tried to do myself. Yeah, that love is very real and genuine. You can see it for sure. I mean, to hear some of the glowing remarks he's had about you, even in his press conferences to this day now, What's that mean to you personally? Oh, that means he was listening. <laughs> I, I look at him on the bench and some of the things, I said, wow, mine is like, was very intense. Even when he first started coaching, I said, I didn't know he was that intense and listening, but he was listening all the time. And I, I guess he was setting himself up to be a coach. Cause that's basically about the same thing I did with my coaches in high school. Uh, even my classmates right now, you know, 50 years later, they say, you doing, you did exactly what we thought you would be doing. Exactly. What do you see in this particular Suns team? They're up two games against a uh, very talented Bucks team with the Greek freak and Giannis Antetokounmpo, who is just a spectacular talent. We know he's coming off an injury, but you can see just how brilliant he is with 40 plus and, you know, 15, 20 rebounds at the drop of a hat. But we know about Chris Paul as a leader and Devin Booker's emergence as an elite level player. But I think there was a moment, it's kind of been shown a lot on television and social media in the last 24 hours plus coach in a timeout fourth quarter where he's up close with a big man and you've coached many of them DeAndre Ayton and you can just see that passion and that leadership connectivity what are you seeing from Monty and then also I guess the the impact on DeAndre Ayton who when he's on a list with guys like Wilt and Russell 
and Bill Walton with his double doubles, 15 plus rebounds. That's pretty rare air. Yeah, that's very rare. I know last year, um, Monty and myself, well, I guess two years ago when, when they were in the bubble, um, I was driving one day and my phone rang and it was, it was Monty Williams. I'm like, Hey, what's up? He said, coach, can we talk? I said, yeah, you know, so we talked and, um, he was just talking about coaching kids. It's just about coaching how you do it for so long. I told him about the love and the passion that, that you have to have. And, and when I told him when they were in the bubble and I watched, I watched DeAndre, well, I knew what Chris, well, I knew what, um, Devin Booker could do from Kentucky and I knew Bridges and, um, I said, Monty, I said, they're talented. They're very talented. And I said, DeAndre Aiden is a young Bill Russell. And, you know, I, I said, I watched him play. I watched him emerge in, in the bubble. And um, it was just amazing how he is um, emerging as a player, you know. And then when they picked up Chris Paul, and I, I know ESPN picked him fourth or fifth, I picked him first or second back in November. I said, when Chris Paul joined that team and uh, uh, when Jay Crowder joined it, I said, oh, the West better watch out. There's a new team in the West. Yeah, veteran presences and leaders that have certainly gone on a lot of journeys, and it's, it's showing here two wins away from an NBA championship. Uh, out of a timeout, I mean, he usually has great sets, doesn't he? I mean, I'm sure he's picked a couple things from your brain. And just also he's mentioned, I know, too, in addition to yourself, uh, legendary coaches like Popovich and Pat Riley have had such uh, influence on him as well. Correct. Well, it's, it's – uh... It's called execution. I mean, when Monty first got drafted by the uh, by Knicks and Riley was there, he told me their days were from eight in the morning to almost six o'clock at night with, with Pat Riley. And I just said, wow. I just, I just said, wow. And then when I actually went down to New Orleans to work with the team uh, that one summer, our days were from seven to seven. We, we had to be there at seven. The coaches, we had to be there at seven o'clock. Players came in about nine. And we didn't leave as coaches. We didn't leave till after seven o'clock. So I, I, I got, I got a chance to realize that NBA looks good and looks all fun and games and having, it is a grind. It is a deep grind. And, and Monty said, you know, coach, you said, Pat, he said, I thought you were tough. He said, you know, I'm glad that you prepared me for Pat Riley. <laughs> yeah. Riles can get, can get under people's skin. Even with that uh, nice clean look or Monty suits and everything. He's, he's got a really tough, tough Irish side about him. So. Right. Last couple ones for you, coach, and I could spend uh, all day with you. You got to catch a flight here soon. But um, your conversations these days, you kind of hit on them a little bit. Um, you really don't have to give this guy much advice now. He's got a lot of it figured out, doesn't he? Oh, he's got it all figured out. I, I, I told him uh, he hit me about maybe maybe about a month ago when they were in the playoffs. You know, a few weeks ago, he said, "Coach, I'm in I'm in different air." He said, I, "I'm not used to this. I'm I'm in." I'm kind of trying to feel my way. I said, yeah, but you're feeling your way pretty good. I said, you're feeling your way pretty good, you know? And I just, I guess I, I just sent him a quote or something or whatever about preparation, execution. And that's about it. He just said, coach, appreciate it. Thank you. And then one day he made me feel really good. He texted me back real quick. He says, coach, we were just talking about you and our staff meeting today. I said, oh, wow, that's pretty good. <laughs> that's pretty good. Um. How's Monty? We know about the smarts, the high GPA. So that's, I think, translatable to player to coach and also just in general when you hear him speak and uh, outside of the game of basketball. But how's Monty the player different from Monty the coach from your perspective? Well, Monty the player, I really didn't know that he was going to, you know, really score 30 points a game in high school. I thought he'd be about 24, 25, but you know, he was 30, he was 30 plus points a game in high school and a plus 16 rebounds. And that was with, a team with two more division one players on it and then probably six or seven college players on it. And he was a leader, you know, he, he was a leader of that team and he was a leader in the off the floor, off the court. Um, one of his classroom situations, but I guess the president of the senior class was a cheerleader and I was, and I was very, very close to the cheerleaders at uh, Potomac also. And she made a statement one day, we were talking in the hallway and she told me she was an algebra two tree. And I said, Oh, that's pretty heavy, you know. And she said, uh, my coach, guess who's the smartest one in there? And she said, Monty's in that class? She said, yeah, he's the smartest one in there. I said, wow. And that's when I knew that he was really a top-notch student and a really top flight because he had the respect of all the students' classroom. Uh, even the piano teacher, who's my fraternity brother, he hit me up before I left. He said, you know, Monty took piano 
he said, "Come shake my senior around here to take piano," and because uh, I wanted to work with their hands, I, my whole team would take piano classes, and they would take piano classes to work with their hands and to have their better hands. He said, "Mine would learn the music, he would do the music, and he became a very good uh, piano player." That's awesome. Didn't know that about uh, his musical uh, side as well. How do you see this thing uh, finishing up? I imagine you got the Suns taking it. Now the question is, is it at four, five, six, or seven? What do you see as this series shifts to Milwaukee, the mean streets of Milwaukee? Well, you know, Milwaukee hasn't really hit that stride yet. I think um, Chris Middleton, you know, I, I was trying to find him on the court last night. He, he, he like, disappeared. And, you know, I, know I think Chris, the foul line as many times as Chris Middleton has in two games. Yeah, well, well when Chris played with Denzel down at, uh, texting him when Denzel was down there, and I had a good chance to see him down there. And I was watching him last night. I said, "Wow, where's Chris at?" I mean, they, they, whoever was, was was guarding was doing a great job on him. And I, you know, I, uh, the guard, the point guard played well last night. Of course, Giannis, he he's a bull. I mean, he he's a bull. He, he's a real bull. And they really don't have an answer for Giannis. But I think their concentration, you know, was on uh, Chris Milton and and uh, the point guard, which turned out really good. So. Giannis is going to get 30. He's going to get 30, 30, 30, 30 or 35 because of his balking. I think when he goes to the hole, I saw some hits last night. When he went to the basket, it was just physical. It was just his physical presence. Yeah, I mean, uh, I pretty much let Greek Freak get his, but stop everybody else, and they have enough firepower. And I don't know if the Bucks have enough offense to to match them four times out of seven, and they're already down too low. So it's – well, I, I loved I, I, what I loved about Phoenix was uh, that for the first game, I sit there and watch the fast break evolve, and I was like, "Wow, it just looked that looks like I think he might have got that from me." <laughs> but their fast break was beautiful. I mean, to, to see to see Chris Paul run that fast break that the Suns run is absolutely beautiful. Well, I get you on this, and I thank you so much for doing this with us, Coach Hickman, a man who's won 520 plus games, and only about 100 of them there in the 757 at Kempsville High School, following his decorated state championship days at Potomac High in Maryland. Uh, what you been up to besides your trips to Phoenix here in retirement? I mean, I'm sure you missed the game some, but you stay close and connected to it. You watch a lot of the high school hoops, the college hoops, the pro hoops. You get a chance to go out to Phoenix. And uh, any possible return trips to the desert there at the series? It does go to a game five, game seven. Or have you said, no, I've done my fill. I'll let them celebrate and watch from afar. I'll let him celebrate. I'll watch it. I took a, I took this long flight out here. It's a uh... It's a five and a half hour fight, so I'm good. <laughs> I think I'll be watching it on TV. Good deal. Well, hey, thank you so much. Uh, it's great to see you uh, enjoying this for your uh, former standout, Monty Williams. Uh, best wishes to you. I'm sure we'll see you around somewhere in the summertime, and uh, we'll catch up with you then. Okay, Matt, make sure to tell my buddy hello. Tell Coach Young. Coach Young, hello. Tell him uh, – I'm engaged. I'm going to be just like him. Oh, wow. I'm sure he'll be thrilled that he wanted to be on this today. In fact, he was busy. He had another uh, engagement. I mean, he's, don't worry. He's not that another, another engagement, but he had something else that he had to tend to. Uh, but I'm sure he'll be thrilled to hear that and looks forward, look forward to catching up with you somewhere at a basketball gym or elsewhere. Okay, sure thing, Matt. Nice talking with you. You bet.